This week on the Gadget Show Web TV, I'm showing you how to turn your old negatives into digital photos. And John's got a first look at the latest recordable FreeSat box from Humax, plus the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome to the Gadget Show Web TV. Now, if you've got a load of old negatives lying around at home and you're not quite sure what to do with them, then fear not, because later I'll show you how to turn them into digital photos. But first, here's John with a first look at the Humax Fox Sat. The good news for people who like watching TV without a subscription is that you can now get a PVR for FreeSat. It's the Humax FoxSat HDR that records in high definition, and I've been trying it for the last few weeks. Now, if you don't know what FreeSat is, basically it's free-to-air digital television, but instead of coming at you terrestrially and received through a rooftop aerial, it comes down via satellite. It actually uses the same group of satellites as Sky, and actually you can use an old Sky installation to record uh, FreeSat, although you'll normally need a couple of LNBs and a couple of uh, feeds off your dish, which screw into the back of the recorder via a coaxial cable. Once it's uh, all plugged in, you actually switch on and there's a very easy auto setup procedure that automatically runs through the various channels and tunes them in. And a very well-designed high-definition EPG it is too. You can choose the way things are displayed. You can have the conventional horizontal view or indeed by pressing the green button, a list of what's on an individual channel during the day. You'll note there are now over 70 free sat channels. A lot of ones you perhaps wouldn't want to bother with, but all the main terrestrial channels are there. And you get two in high definition. There's BBC HD and ITV HD, which is exclusive to the FreeSat platform. Although you access it through a sort of channel in channel, and there aren't actually that many high definition programs on ITV at the moment. You can obviously record straight from the guide, one touch for a program, or indeed you can record a whole series, and you can record radio programs from the guide as well, which I'd find uh, quite useful. Or indeed, you can simply select something to watch, in which case you get uh, the option of a really very comprehensive on-screen display of information. Quite the most comprehensive one I've ever seen on a PVR. You get signal strength here, you get how far you are through the program, you get the definition of the program, and of course, uh, information about what's on during the program. You can select different levels of information by pressing the uh, information key on the large and relatively logical remote. And, rather usefully, you also get channel information on the display of the unit itself. Like all good PBRs, it automatically records what you're watching into a buffer, so you can instantly rewind if you need to without having pressed pause first, which is very good. Unlike the Skybox, though, it doesn't actually record what's in the buffer if you choose to record a program you're watching. You only get the program from the moment you actually press the record button. As for picture quality, though, I think it's very good. It's certainly the equal of uh, my Sky Plus HD box, both in standard and high definition. And if anything, the uh, Humax is a little more contrasty on standard definition footage. And the actual look of the box is quite good. It's slimmer than a Sky box and has a really rather stylish glass panel at the front. When it comes to watching back your recorded material, again, there's an excellent interface. Programs are automatically grouped into folders. My fifth gears for there are all in a fifth gear folder, for example. And when I watch them back, you'll notice it's automatically divided it into chapters for easy navigation. And if I want to put my own bookmarks into the program, there's something, say, I want to go back to quite often, I can using the bookmark button on the remote control. Now, there's 320 gigabytes of hard disk space, so that should be enough for quite a bit of recordings, probably around 150 hours at standard definition. But if you need more, I can connect an external hard drive via a USB socket. There's one in the front and one in the back. And I can uh, also use that socket to transfer music and photos onto the device if I want to uh, actually use it as a sort of multimedia hub. It's very quiet hardly makes any noise at all, and it's very efficient. It uses under one watt of electricity in standby, which is good. It does take a while to boot up, though, and it's also really rather expensive. It's about £300, so although there's no subscription, there is quite a bit of capital outlay. Having said that, though, it's a superbly engineered bit of kit and a great addition to the TV landscape. 
Right, now it's time for the news. And first up, more Apple rumours. Because according to the Chinese website Apple.pro, there's a 15-inch MacBook Air in the works. Now, the current model has a 13.3-inch screen and a powerful NVIDIA graphics card. So if these rumours turn out to be true, you'll still have the ultra portability with the trademark thin case and that powerful Nvidia chipset with the added bonus of a larger screen. But as always, Apple neither deny or confirm whether these rumours are true, so it's just a matter of wait and see. Next up, YouTube have decided to take a step towards downloadable content as a selection of video clips have recently been made available with a click to download feature. Now previously, people have been able to host YouTube clips on their sites or blogs by copying the HTML code that points straight back to the main site. So perhaps this could be a permanent policy shift for YouTube in allowing users to download video clips that they can later watch offline. now for one of my how-tos, and this week I've been busy dusting off my old negatives. The arrival of digital cameras has revolutionised the way we take pictures. It's now even easier to share photos with friends, you can get prints done in store, online or at home, and you can even make photo albums, mugs and t-shirts. But what about the great pictures from yesteryear? Bundles of old negatives and slides lying redundant in drawers and gathering dust in the loft. Well, now help is at hand, because you can easily convert negatives and slides into digital images by using a digital film scanner, like this one. So here's the Gadget Show's guide for converting your photo negatives into digital images. There are a number of ways you can get your film images into the digital format, from taking them to your local photo developer and getting them put onto CD, to scanning the photos in manually. Now if you have a lot of images and you can't decide on just your favourites, then scanning in the original negatives is a great option, as it can often be the cheapest. Now the process can be quite time consuming, but once you have all the equipment, it's a relatively easy one button process. But if you do have thousands of pictures, I'd recommend setting aside a weekend. I'm using this, the VHO Negative One Touch Scanner, which will scan all of your old 35mm slides and negatives. It then allows you to edit them in a software called Photo Impressions, ready for printing, archiving or just viewing them on the big screen. It includes Colorbrite technology picture enhancement software that increases the clarity of the picture by automatically adjusting the backlight and colour balance according to the subject matter. And with one-touch scanning, it makes it really easy to start converting those old photos. Once you've installed your software, you need to hook your scanner up to your laptop or computer and place your negatives into the tray that comes with the scanner. Now this inserts into the front and it will click when it's in there correctly. And then using the software, go to the Get Photos tab and select Acquire from Scanner. This will bring up another window and you can change all the settings but I've got it as I want it. Select the Acquire button and it will bring up another pop-up window and you'll actually be able to see the picture as a negative. Now you need to take a snapshot and you can do that one of two ways, either the snapshot button in the pop-up window or by pushing down the top of the digital scanner. Now it still looks like a negative and not a proper image, so you need to transfer using the button. And this will convert the negative and save it onto your computer as a digital image. See, it's just popped up here. And as you can see, my image has been saved in a digital format on my computer. And once I've converted all my negatives into the digital format, I can edit them or archive them for future use. So now you can convert your treasured memories into the digital age and keep them safely backed up onto your computer. So you never have to rummage through your photo albums to find your favourite snaps again. Well, unfortunately, that's it for this week. But next week, John's testing the latest noise-cancelling headphones from Denon. And I'll be showing you how to mix up your MP3s and be a digital DJ.